All right. Hello and a very good morning, good day, good evening, good afternoon, or wherever you are. What applies to you and a very warm welcome to the second session of our um, FinGeo webinar. The ter uh, this term's webinar series is co-chaired by Manuel Alvarez and myself, Sabine Dury, and we are very happy to see well, a couple of you at least um, participating, but we expect more than uh, more participants um, during the time, during the next minutes. So it's my very, it's a big pleasure um, to introduce our today's speaker, Fabio Contel. And um, Fabio holds a master's degree um, and a PhD degree in, uh, in human geography from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And during uh, his PhD studies in 2005. He also held a doctoral internship at the Friedrich Schiller University in Jena in Germany, where he was also um, a uh, invited or visiting scholar in, uh, or Gastwissenschaftler in 2007. And since 2008, Fabio has been an assistant professor at the Department of Geography at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil again. So his uh, main themes of research are in urban and geog uh, economic geography with a specific uh, interest, uh, research interest in financial geographies. And he published already a couple of books. Uh, the first one was published in 2011 in Portuguese. <laughs> um, a book, that book was about finance and territory, norms, techniques, and banking topology in Brazil. And the second book, uh, which a much more recent book, um, uh, with a very similar, ti a similar title to his webinar presentation today, uh, he published that in 2020 with Springer on the financialization of the Brazilian territory from global forces to local dynamisms. And Fabio is, of course, also a, uh, our FinGeo ambassador to South America. Um, uh, and so welcome, Fabio. So before I give you the mic, um, Fabio, to housekeeping rules, perhaps uh, up front, please keep your mic uh, muted until the Q&A session uh, when you want to ask a question. And please also use the chat box to indicate with a cue or however um, that you want to ask a question in the Q&A session and or write a full question in the chat box and I can read it out loud then. So um, let us start with Fabio's presentation today on the financialization of the Brazilian territory, theoretical and empirical aspects of its recent evolution. Um, I think you will probably speak for the next 30 to 35 minutes or so exactly, and then we will have time for an extended Q&A session um, where you can obviously ask your questions. So, very happy to have you here, Fabio. And without further ado, I hand the mic over to you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sabine. Uh, I'm obviously very glad to be here. And I will first ask you for some comprehension because I'm very hoarse. I got a cold in the next, uh, uh, in these next less days. Uh, I. I got some classes on afternoon at night yesterday, so uh, I will do my best to try to share with you some, well, some recent findings from my researches and also from those researches uh, that my PhD and master degree students are doing here in the University of Sao Paulo. So it, it is a very, it is a very, it is a huge responsibility to be here with you guys. Some of, some of you are one of the most important people that are studying financial geography nowadays. So I'm glad to be here, but I'm really also a little bit afraid of being here to share with you some of, some of my, my, my recent uh, findings in our uh, work here at the University of Sao Paulo. Let me first try to share with you. Uh, if I got it, I'm not seeing my PDF file. Can you believe it, Sabine? Uh, uh. 
I don't see it either, but Alex has Let a pickup. Me. Oh, yes, uh, it's coming up, I think. Not yet. Yes, now. Are yeah, you there seeing? it is. Perfect. Okay, let me put it in. So as, uh, as Sabine told us, the, 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 the title of the presentation, I will try to talk about what we are calling the financialization of the Brazilian territory. Uh, I will start, this is the structure of the presentation. I will try trying to share some kind of more theoretical aspects of this financialization. We, are, we will try to propose some kind of alternative inter interpretation of this very important concept that uh, all social scientists are using to, to, to highlight the, 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 the large importance of finance in the uh, contemporary process of globalization. And then I will try to also show some more empirical uh, data or information about uh, four aspects of what we are calling the financialization of the Brazilian territory. Uh, uh, aspects uh, related to the Brazilian banking system and then to the Brazilian ex stock, stock exchange. The, 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 the uh, the, the biggest novelty, the biggest uh, uh, main process that are running on in the Brazilian territory is the ascension of fintechs. And then I will, I will finish this more empirical uh, part of the presentation, talking about a very, a very interesting kind of financial actor that uh, is also uh, is also one of the main components or one of the components of the, this process of financialization, which are the community banks. And obviously I will find, I, I will, I will uh, conclude my presentation with some uh, final remarks. Well, uh, at the very basis of our, our attempt to, to do an interpretation of what is going on in Brazil, uh, a very important author is this one uh, that is in the picture in our right side. Uh, Milton Santos wrote some books since the, 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 since the 70s, but mainly in the 90s, that uh, brings a lot of uh, solid proposals and very operational concepts to understand the process of globalization, including the importance of finance and information in the process of globalization. Uh, one of the main uh, proposals of this author is that in, uh, it, it, is obviously, it is obviously not uh, possible to start any interpretation of countries like Brazil without starting from the point that we we uh, we we have some kind of subor subordinate uh, insertion in the division international division of labor so uh, everything that, that structured our economy our future our our territory it is related with demands with orders and with uh, other kinds of elements that are defined outside our territories. And this is one of the main things that we consider it uh, to do our interpretation from the financialization. Besides of other all, a, a very, uh, a, a very uh, uh, diverse uh, and interesting propositions, one of the main things that we at the, is at the very basis of our interpretations is the definition of geographical space that this author proposed. Uh, there are at least two main definitions of this very important category of our uh, field of knowledge. Uh, the, the geographical space can be defined as a combination of systems of objects and systems of actions. And in more Marxist terms, it could be also defined as dead labor combined with living labor, as Marx originally uh, wrote. 
Another very important concept that uh, Milton Santos proposed and which, which is very important to highlight uh, the, the, the active role of space in the financialization process is this what he called it, it, it is a huge word, but I think it is very operational. There is a new kind of milieu or new kind of built environment that con conditions all of our actions. He called it this new kind of milieu or environment as a technical, scientific, informational milieu. So the, the, all the hegemonic, hegemonic actions like banks and investment funds and, and also institutional investors do, uh, they are, they are def definitely related to this kind of new milieu. Uh, one of the main propositions of Milton Santos, uh, 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 more close to the financial problem is uh, he considers not only uh, what we could call high finance or these more complex actors and more complex instruments as financialization. He defines financialization more, more related to, to monetary or credit processes as well. So uh, this, this would be, I think, one of the main differences of the definition of financialization that I will try to, uh, to de develop in my presentation. Uh, for him, globalization is, a, is a, an historical period uh, that is very absolutely based in these two main elements, finances or finance and information. And one, one last thing, and I will get to this at the end of my presentation again, uh, it is possible. It is possible to use this the same techniques, the same informational techniques, to uh, to deal with finance in alternative or some way counter rational ways. Uh, I try to uh, get him from these uh, theoretical uh, this theoretical basis. I try to, as Sabine very generously remembered. I tried to make this interpretation from the Brazilian territory uh, using all uh, part of the things that I told uh, in the last slide. Uh, I, am, I am trying to, to highlight that what occurs in Brazil is some kind of low intensive financialization because of these uh, elements that are highlighted in this slide. So there are some particularities of the Brazilian financial capitalism uh, due to this peripheral or semi-peripheral condition. Uh, Brazil, it's a, it's a much more bank-based economy and not a mark, capital market-based economy. Uh, there is some kind of restricted performance of the capital mar market. Uh, the securitization process, which is at the, which is the, in the very basis of, well, the, the, the North American economy or the Great Britain economy, it, it is not so well diffused and it is not, a, 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 it is not a, a, a large part of the financial uh, reality in Brazil. And one third thing that must be in our considerations, and I try to deal with it in this book, it's that in countries like Brazil, there are huge regional and also huge uh, social income inequalities. So uh, instead of uh, considering what is going on in Brazil as a high intensive financialization, as it occurs in central countries, uh, we are considering that there is a financialization process going on, but it also involves, as, as I told you already, it also involves these, these, more, these more simple uh, financial variables like, like money and, and credit processes. Uh, so as, as it was highlighted in the structure of the presentation, I will try to show some, to show some kind of 
a broad picture of what happened in the Brazilian banking system uh, at the very beginning as it has, has occurred in all peripheral countries. The first banks was absolutely related to export trade and to finance this export trade. This is one of the main causes of the fact that uh, all the urbanization in countries like Brazil, but all the uh, bank networks were uh, more uh, largely concentrated in coastal area, areas because of these areas are, were, was and are obviously more related to this export trade. Uh, what is also a very important thing to highlight is that uh, until the 50s, 1950s in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, which is the second largest metropolis in the Brazilian uh, urban network, Rio de Janeiro was the main financial center. And nowadays, Sao Paulo is, uh, Sao Paulo took its place. Uh, uh, until also this decade, uh, all banks are, were more local or regional, or all, all banks had their some kind of captive market because we didn't have this technical scientific informational milieu very diffused in the territory so it was impossible to to the centralization process in the banking system uh, be done so all, all banks were more local and regional what uh, uh, what breaks this structure is the financial reform that took place with the military coup in 1974 in Brazil. The, uh, the, the uh, in, in the, at the same year they started to implement a financial, a, a, a huge financial reform, which uh, that changed the regulation, the banking regulation to to catalyze uh, the centralization of capital. Uh, so uh, a very huge process of banking concentration uh, began in 1964. And since then, Sao Paulo st started to become uh, the main national financial center. One last thing that it would be important to highlight is until the 80s, uh, bank branches or presential channels were the, the only way to access financial services. This is important to say because what we are facing now, this is one of the, the more uh, uh, for me and for people that are studying a bank basing, uh, people that are studying bank based economies, we are facing a, a, an extremely important change in the way that banks provide financial services. Uh, this table at the right side of the slide try to show it. But first, uh, uh, before uh, talking about this table, uh, it is important to say that Brazil, besides of being a bank-based economy, it is a very oligopolized market. So the five largest banks, which are uh, which are showed at the left side of the of the, the slide, Banco do Brasil, Caixa Econômica Federal, Bradesco, Itaú, and Santander, they uh, control something like uh, seventy or seventy five percent of the Brazilian credit market. So it is a very oligopolized market. Uh, with the introduction of the information technology. Uh, what what we are calling this banking topology, so this the, the, the banking network that provides access to financial services, uh, is obviously becoming more intensive and in information in less intensive and in presential channels. This is one of the main causes of the fact that since the since the year of two thousand and fifteen. Uh, the number of bank branches in Brazil decreased and it is going, this decreasing process is, is getting even more, even more strong. Uh, and obviously the weakest side of this transformation of the bank topology is the side of labor force. So besides of the number 
the side of the number uh, of uh, jobs in banks are decreasing. Also, there is a huge process of precarization of bank work directly related to the automation process in these same branches. So what, what this table tries to show is that, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, if we see the green part of the bars, the green part shows, to, to highlight only one aspect of the table, uh, the green part shows uh, how mobile banking channels uh, grow up in these, uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the technical systems that provides financial system, that provides financial services to the Brazilian population. So uh, the fact is that we, we are, we are we are changing our banking topology from some kind of more crystallarian, from router crystaller way of understanding it or organizing it to a more digitalized or more informational uh, form of structuring the uh, banking topology. Uh, to say some words about the, I'm starting to get worried with the time, but I will try to show you some changes in the stock exchanges uh, configuration in the Brazilian territory. Mainly there's the, the centralization of the stock exchanges as it is possible to see in this map. Uh, uh, there was in 1968, uh, something like 26 different stock exchanges in Brazil uh, distributed or scattered in several states and several regions uh, in the Brazilian territory. The, 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 the one that it's also the only stock exchange in Brazil was created in 1935. Uh, in 1985, this same stock exchange uh, became from the, which, which is Bovespa, which was the so stock exchange from Sao Paulo, uh, became be, became more important than the this the that one that was the more important one in Brazil, which was the stock exchange from Rio de Janeiro, and in 2016 uh, it changed its name to Bovespa to B3, and nowadays uh, there is only uh, B, this B3 in the Brazilian territory. So there is only one metropolis that hosts the only uh, stock exchange in the Brazilian territory. Uh, so to talk about some, uh, some very important new kinds of uh, re reorganizations of this process of financialization in Brazil, uh, we, are, we are also studying the, the fintech phenomena. Uh, fintechs, I'm, I'm not going to take too much time in this slide. Well, fintechs are, can be seen as the intensive startups that are intensive in the use of financial technology. There are a lot of definitions of fintech. It's like uh, all of, or some of the words that we use in our studies, it, it is a little bit polysemic. It is acronym from financial and technologies. Uh, what is important to highlight is that financial authorities or monetary authorities in Brazil, they are very, uh, they are they are very excited with the diffusion of fintechs in Brazil, because uh, monetary monetary authorities uh, they expect that the diffusion of fintechs will change the market, the credit market, uh, or this. Uh, this uh, entry of new actors in the credit market will be a huge uh, tool to uh, to uh, to to change also the uh, to change also the uh, rates of I forgot the word I will I will come back uh, in a minute. The, the introduction of fintechs in the Brazilian credit market will 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 bring more efficiency and will uh, low down 
financial costs in the economy in general terms. Why fintechs can do this? Because they are uh, very, very, uh, they are organizations very, very uh, information intensive. So their structures are lighter, they are more dynamic, they, they play, they, they operate with lower costs and also obviously they can uh, practice more, also lower prices, inclu including, uh, uh, including for these services that uh, the, the popula general, population in general uses to, uh, to purchase or uses to, to get with these kind of fintechs. What is also important to highlight is that uh, to the new generations, the, even the, the digital form of communication that are in the very basis of fintech operation, uh, it, this is very seductive. This is very efficient to, to bring the new generations to their, uh, to their organizations instead of uh, consuming financial products or services from traditional commercial banks. Uh, to show some data about the relative position of Brazil in this, uh, well, some kind of international division of labor related, mainly related to fintechs. Uh, Brazil stands in, a, in some way in, in a, in a it, it is the first, Brazil has the first position in Latin America, but in, in terms of uh, the, the position of Brazil, in terms of the whole world financial system, Brazil stays at a, some way, it, it, is, a, it is a very, uh, it is a very uh, important place. It is in the 14th place in, uh, in this more global context. What is really intriguing is that at least with the data that that one of these uh, consult, consulting firms that produces reliable reliable data about fintechs, uh, this one which is called Fintechs about the last uh, report that they published in 2021 shows that Sao Paulo, in terms of the city, the distribution of fintechs, not in the context of countries, but in the in the, in some kind of city context. Sao Paulo has a more important relative position, uh, being the fourth more uh, important city that nowadays has uh, fintechs in their geographical context. To say a little, to, to show some data also using uh, these uh, this report, but this is another. I'm, I'm sorry, there are two. There are two very important reports that bring reliable data about fintechs also from Brazil. This one is a Brazilian one, a distrital report that the, the, the last one that was published shows that in Brazil we had some kind of, uh, some, uh, uh, we, we have uh, something around a thousand and twenty, one thousand and 289 fintechs, uh, mainly of the, the most part of them are credit fintechs, payment fintechs, back and back office fintechs. Some of them are mainly these back office fintechs. Uh, they are uh, B2B companies. They, uh, they are very closely related to the necessities of other financial institutions. But some of them, this would be one of the most uh, also intriguing things in this financialization process in the Brazilian territory. Some of them are related to this transformation in the uh, credit market or banking market. Uh, the, the, the largest one are uh, fintechs that we can consider it, fintechs that provide digital services. But the, 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 the first one, as these, uh, this figure shows, uh, th these are the, ten, the top 10 fintechs in Brazil. Uh, some of them, besides of being digital services, uh, 
fintechs, they are called also uh, digital banks, which is, uh, which is a, a figure that don't exist in the Brazilian monetary regulation. That uh, these firms that in fact, they are system of payments, they uh, they sell themselves to the uh, to the public as digital banks and the name digital banks has a huge appeal uh, in the brazilian uh, credit market or with the brazilian population in general terms so some of their success are is related to to this kind of brand name uh, digital bank, but I, I want to emphasize that there's no such thing, at least in the Brazilian regulation, there's no such thing as, as digital banks and in, 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 at least in the official terms. Uh, so that, and that the largest one, the largest FinTech in Brazil is a digital bank, which is new bank. I, I remember that I, told something about it in uh, one of our uh, other seminars so so some to say because of it is the the, the most important uh, fintech in brazil nubank became a huge financial institute and uh, institution uh, uh, it is nowadays the, the the largest brazilian fintechs fintech uh, it worth something about 31 billion dollars it worth it uh, one month ago or two months ago it worth it something around 48 billion dollars it, it it became larger than than some of the the largest brazilian commercial banks but nowadays it worth something like this it has it has had a huge growth of its customer bases so nowadays uh, this new bank has something around 64.8 million uh, clients in their customer base and it, it new bank became larger than uh, in this 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 last month new bank become larger than center center there bank which is this spanish bank that uh, also have a, a, a huge operation in brazil so new bank in terms of the number of clients it is the the, the, the fourth la largest digital bank in brazil and what is also interesting to note is that uh, the owners of uh, the owners of no bank are obviously uh, hegemonic actors like investment funds, like funds, funds like Sequoia Capital, DST Global, 100 Tiger Global. One of these, in fact, are Tcent. These Chinese, I don't remember which one, but one of these are Tcent, uh, the Chinese uh, huge investment fund. And there, there are also three. Well. Uh, Three, in, three individuals that were people that worked in uh, Merrill Lynch, people that worked in some 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 uh, investment banks that with the, the 2008 crisis uh, started their own uh, or opened their own institutions. This is the case of mainly David Vélez, which is a Colombian guy, but he lives in Brazil. Uh, and he is the main owner of uh, New Bank, and also Cristina Junqueira and Adam Weibel. To show some kind of, uh, well, distribution of fintechs in Brazil as everything that is related to finance, or, or almost everything that is related to finance, uh, there is a huge concentration of fintechs. This, this map at our right side is a map from 2001. This map at the right side is a map from 2000, excuse me, 2020 at the left side and 2021 at the right side. As it's possible to see, uh, there is a huge concentration of fintechs in the south and what mainly at the southeast of the Brazilian territory, just to show you some figure of what is going on. And to finish the presentation, this is one of, I think this is one of, for people that 
the belief that we can create a new logic to use finance uh, uh, if, if, if not in a, in a counter rational way, or, or at, at least in, in an alternative way, th there are a lot of uh, very uh, scattered and, 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 and small activities in Brazil related to finance that we can call community banks. So uh, this one that is in the picture at the right side of the slide is the largest one. It became some kind of uh, the, the, the central bank of the community banks in Brazil. No, it, it is a joke. It's obviously not a central, but it, uh, they are the, the most well-organized uh, community bank so they they sell their te their technology to other uh, to other uh, sm smaller uh, community banks that are being created in Brazil why this kind of uh, new organization is it's very interesting and, and intriguing they are always all all of them are created by social movements social movements related to housing feminist social movements, uh, movements to, to try to get uh, pu public facilities. Uh, they are self-management organizations. People that live in their neighborhood are the main uh, actors of this organization. They are absolutely uh, rooted in their communities, in their places that they do uh, their activities. They are very, to, to say, a, well, um, a more theoretical concept, they are totally embedded in their contexts. They don't uh, practice interest charges in, uh, in their operations. This is one of the most, for me, it's, more, it's one of the most intriguing things that uh, it is in the very basis of their actions. Uh, they also stimulate economic activities. They lend money to uh, well, to, to, to small kind of uh, commerce and small kind of uh, economic activities that people that live in the neighborhood can, can do. Uh, but they also stimulate non-economic actions. So uh, the community banks can be seen as some kind of uh, uh, promoter of, of uh, solidarity actions uh, in their context. They are located in mainly in low income areas, or as I will show you in the next map, or in the, in the more poor regions in Brazilian territory, but also inside the metropolises that are in the rich regions from the Brazilian territory, they are located in the, per, in the periphery of these metropolis. Uh, this map that I took from a student of a PhD, a PhD student of mine that worked uh, on the, the, the problem of the community, the question of the community banks in Brazil, as it is possible to see, they are more, some way more well distributed. They don't, they, they don't locate themselves like the, well, the, the regular banks, they were, they, they located where where the more dynamic regions uh, produce more uh, surplus or produce more accidents, they, they are more well distributed because they are, as I told, uh, they are very related to areas that are not served by normal banks. So they are, they are very spontane spontaneous uh, uh, kinds of organizations that try to fill this gap to these more pure communities. So I think I'm, I'm on time, Sabine, uh, but, but let, me, let me do some kind of some, some, some final remarks. So uh, the financialization of the Brazilian territory, one of the main aspects of this financialization, where we are still a bank-based economy, but it is an economy in transformation. Uh, we, uh, we are seeing that it is uh, since 2018, uh, 
that personal investors are becoming more important in the stock market, but it is not a, a, it is not a, a huge process. It is also that it, it, it should be at the very beginning, but it, it is going on. Uh, what is also a very important thing that we will take some attention in our researches is that in this new kind of competition that uh, uh, fintechs brings to the Brazilian capital market, uh, we are trying to understand what large commercial banks are doing. So they, they do two, mainly two things. They are creating their, their subsidiaries, uh, digital subsidiaries. They are creating their own digital banks, or they are. They, they, uh, there is a, 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 an important process of acquisition of fintechs by these uh, old commercial banks or, or traditional commercial banks. Uh, there are some important alternative forms of financial agents that are still being created in the Brazilian territory. There will be no time to talk about co cooperative banks, but they are, they are even stronger than community banks in Brazil. And then ha they have an organization that is more, uh, it is more, it is less, it is less capitalist in a, some, some way. It is, it is more related to the, to the needs of the communities that they were they, they are anchored or the word where they are embedded and also the community banks maybe it is, it is the more interesting thing that is happening in the brazilian territory regarding these alternative ways to uh, to deal with the financialization process uh, and one more one last thing to 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 get back to the first slide what we are trying to do some way it, it is, is to like how geography and geographical elements of the financialization process, mainly these infrastructures, these systems of objects, or these technical, these informational technologies, uh, has uh, an active role in the process of financialization. So that's it. Thank you very much. I hope that it was at least understandable. I'm really sorry about my, the condition of my voice. And I also know that you guys are very, uh, uh, very generous regarding also my English. So thank you very much again, Sabine, and my, my dear colleagues, Sabine and Manuel for the invitation. It is an honor. It is a huge responsibility. I hope that uh, we can discuss things uh, and thank you again for having me here. Thank you so much, Fabio. I think you see all this kind of like virtual applause now um, uh, <laughs> popping up. <laughs> and uh, we really enjoyed the talk, at least I did. It was a fascinating, fascinating insights you delivered here uh, in your talk. Um, perfect timing, by the way. I'm inclined to give five more minutes at the end because we started late. Um, and uh, I invite a lot of questions here to the discussion, if there are any, and if you need a little more time, I'm also happy to go with the first question, to be honest, <laughs> but I don't want to abuse my position as a chair here, but I will do anyway, because I don't see questions popping up at the moment. So Fabio, thank you very much um, for your amazing talk, and I really, really liked how you positioned or how you gave us an overview uh, of the Brazilian um, um, well, banking system more or less, and also how you actually uh, try to uh, talk us through the financialization process with a bit of Brazilian trades, actually. I was, I think my question is more, um, what are the financialization drivers? Because obviously you, you said that's a Brazilian um, um, characteristics here um, at force. And I think I want to position this question among different observations here. You told us, or you showed us at the beginning, which I found fascinating because it's so different from, well, partially different from the, the systems we are usually discussing. First of all, you showed us this re huge regional disparities in terms of banks, also stock exchanges you talked us through. 
Um, and then you also said uh, you talked, you you came to the uh, point of fintechs, and uh, where I saw that like payments were hugely important. Um, this kind of like functions also digital services, but less so credit relationships. And from our own work, I know, or we came across, we did not really uh, go into depth there, but um, from our own work I, I, on SWIFT, on the payment infrastructure, literally, we also know that, or we observed that uh, there's a lot of trade going on within uh, or between Brazil, Brazil and other Latin American countries, rather not really, you know, on a global um, uh, basis, but much, much more concentrated in a regional market. So then you showed us that with new bank, this kind of like new fintech um, or yet yeah, this large, large digitalized bank, shareholders are now coming from abroad. You mentioned the Chinese shareholders and so on. So I was thinking, I mean, so you have this kind of like regional concentration and then now the opening towards the global financial markets in terms of shareholders and so on. So what is your take? What are drivers? Are the drivers of the Brazilian financialization model more local or regional? Or are they are now, do we enter a new phase? Or I don't know. So it, perhaps you can help me making sense of that by elaborating on, on this kind of issue a little more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sabine. I'm I'm not sure if I'm I'm prepared to answer you, but what I will uh, what I will what I would say is that uh, the, the commercial banks has a huge power in Brazil. What what is going on? It's some way it is uh, it is uh, not. Uh, a movement that it's it, it is structurally structurally changing the Brazilian financial uh, landscape, uh, but uh, uh, at least as I showed, uh, at least in terms of getting customers uh, and to to dispute the market, the credit market, uh, new institutions like. Like New Bank has, uh, it is it is a uh, well it is a novelty that uh, it's some way it is starting to change things. But I think that the main force still are the commercial banks because of their history, because of their political power. Uh, it, it seems. Uh, since the some kind of coup d'etat that Dilma Rousseff in 2016 uh, uh, that happened in 2016, that the Brazilian Central Bank became more autonomous. So uh, financial agents in general, but mainly commercial banks, they have more uh, they have more autonomy to to rule things uh, without being worried about more, uh, without being more uh, concerned with problems that are more general than the financial system itself. So I think that, well, to, to say very briefly, the, the main drivers are, are still the, the Brazilian commercial banks, which are Another specificity of our bank-based system is that two of the, the, the four uh, the four biggest Brazilian commercial banks, two of them are public banks, uh, Caixa Econômica Federal and Banco do Brasil. So this is also some kind of specificity of uh, our financial system. And the other two of them are private national banks, absolutely national banks, which are Bradesco and Itaú. So uh, this is not the same case as if, if we compare with Mexico. The, 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 the banking system of Mexico was uh, absolutely internationalized in the 90s, also because a lot of pressure of the United States. So, uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm saying this to try to also to highlight again the, the importance of the Brazilian commercial banks. Besides of being uh, national, two of them are public ones. So may, maybe this is one an important figure to understand 
who 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 who, who drives things in the Brazilian financial system, Sabine. Thank you. That's very illuminating, actually. I'm learning a lot here. <laughs> you're you're um, very generous. No, I'm, I'm honest. <laughs> Thank you, Fabi. Uh, we have more questions, and I hand over the mm -hmm. mic to Darek, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Sabine. Uh, thank you for a great presentation, despite the cold, Fabio. Uh, really uh, wonderful. And my, I have two questions. One is, how, in your view, has this changing geography of, uh, of the financial sector in Brazil affected the financial inclusion in, in general? Uh, and, and, and second, is financial inclusion at all... Uh, uh, a significant issue uh, during the ongoing uh, general elections in, in Brazil. So is it something that features or featured on any election uh, manifesto or, or, or not? Thank you so much, Derek, for your question. Yeah, uh, I have at least two, three things to tell about uh, what you said. Uh, it is not clear the, the, the role of fintechs in financial inclusion, but at least the number of people that are opening accounts in, in these kind of institutions, uh, it, it is a very huge number, uh, as we saw in, 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 in the case of Newbank. Even lower income population, uh, uh, they were uh, they were a lot of this part of the Brazilian population were started to related with these digital banks. So fintechs is uh, one of the cause of one of the, one of the cause of these. In some way, it's a financial inclusion in terms of uh, depending on the way that you define financial inclusion. The, at least the number of banking accounts uh, uh, grew up in a very fast and huge way. This is one of the main points. The second point is the, uh, uh, the COVID pandemic because of the need for uh, isolation. Th these kind of banks that were totally digital, they uh, absorbed uh, uh, the main part of people that started to uh, open a bank account, uh, did this within the fintechs. And also the third thing that you noted is also very important because uh, uh, since, the, since the 90s, but, but uh, in this last two years, also because of the COVID pandemic, uh, some public uh, uh, some public uh, po policies were taken to give money to poor people in a certain way at the very beginning uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a well democratic way it was absolutely necessary but in this next is the in this last two or three months they invented a new kind of social uh, uh, social uh, policy to, to, to get, to give money to poor people, but much more uh, politically interested than anything. So, but the, these, these kind of policies, uh, uh, redistribution income policies are also uh, one of the drive, drive forces of the, the financial inclusion in Brazil. I, 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 but I, I want to emphasize again, depending on what we define as financial inclusion, because in, in some way, uh, this is only uh, a kind of very simple relationship with these institutions. There, there's, there's no such thing like uh, empowerment or, or more, uh, more, uh, there's no such thing as uh, inclusion in a more broad sense. Uh, uh, this money, at least these last movements of the federal government 
are more related to uh, to get more political uh, uh, support than than everything. Thanks. Thanks for a question, Derek. Thank you, Fabio. So uh, we have two more questions, um, one from Ivana and three or so from Claudia. So, but we have only um, six more minutes. So I would like to, perhaps we can, you know, uh, uh, collect both questions. First over to Ivana and then Claudia, perhaps you can read out, focus on two most important questions and then over to Fabio again. Hi Sabine, hi Fabio for your presentation. That was very interesting. Uh, I was wondering, I see the banking system in Brazil uh, similar to the Argentinian one in term, but uh, larger scale. I was wondering about this uh, big banks and the role of new bank entering the market. In, in general, we see uh, banks here, uh, commercial banks here as very let's say inefficient organizations that are based on large fees to both customers and, and companies and their success and their gains are based on these uh, high fees and privileges uh, in terms of their contact with uh, state agencies and you know elites being part of the elite. And I thought that new bank entered the market through a sort of competing in terms of fees to individuals and in that sense, they sort of broke uh, the, the traditional system or traditional banking system but through fees. I was wondering if you if you had more information about this or if it, this was true or not. And the other thing is um, uh, these uh, elite uh, banks uh, or very linked to the elite in, in Brazil, is this uh, changing because they, are they offering lower fees or is new bank offering also services to companies and not only to individuals? Yeah. That's Thank you, Ivana. Claudia, I limit you to one question, please. I'm so sorry, time's not on, your, on our side. <laughs> Okay, I just wanted, uh, thank you, <laughs> first, firstly, uh, I just wanted to know, to have your view, Fabio, uh, about the, okay, I think the most interesting, it will be like, um, the, as, as you said about the, the community banks, do you think that they are arising because uh, they are occupying, sort of occupying uh, uh, the vacuum that the state may be, uh, living behind do you think this makes sense i'd like to hear from you about that thanks try a short thank answer please i'm sorry for you <laughs> oh no, that's okay <clears throat> thank you very much ivana and claudia good to see you again and uh, ivana yes you are you are absolutely right uh, new bank they they work with uh, no cost credit cards and also no cost bank accounts. So, and what is, I, I think that in my, my last presentation in Finjau, I, I, I showed they work uh, for five or six years without doing profits, only with uh, 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 investments that were done by these huge uh, investment funds. So, but now they are getting uh, their their uh, budgets uh, with with prof with profits. But uh, since they were created because of these policies of not charging uh, people uh, with credit cards and opening account banks, uh, they were they were working in uh, without without profit uh, and. To Claudia, yes, uh, one of the main reasons for these kind of community banks uh, being have been created is that there's no other option to get to get credit, and in, in in some way they are very simple operations that a, a, a small organization can offer it. So, and one one also important thing to to. Uh, to highlight is that in the uh, in the government of the worker parties, which will bring again in these next elections, 
I'm praying for this and I'm doing everything that I can here for this uh, uh, during the the, 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 the the government of President Lula and then Dilma Rousseff, there was a huge policy for uh, to finance this, this uh, community bank. So some of them uh, were created because of some help from the government, but even when they took out Dilma Rousseff from uh, from the presidency, uh, they they uh, there was a huge they, there was a huge uh, sensation that uh, they will uh, disappear, but they are still they they last they are still uh, they are still being created in Brazil, even without uh, uh, these kind of. Uh, 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 policies that were very normal in the uh, uh, worker party worker party's government so yeah, yes but to to say to be more direct uh, in your question uh, yes they they are created uh, where there are no other options of getting credit or si simple uh, financial service and products Thank you very much, Fabio. Um, I'm afraid we need to come to an end here with our webinar. It was a fascinating talk, a very insightful presentation. I'm sure we have learned a lot. Uh, so thank you, Fabio, for sharing your insights. Thank you for a very lively discussion. And before we um, uh, well, uh, finish the webinar, I would like to also draw your attention to the upcoming monthly Fingeo drink event with Janelle Nox says tomorrow. Uh, Claudia indicated that in the chat as well. And also to our uh, next Fingio webinar with Ivana uh, Sokolov, um, which is going to take place on the 7th of November. And Manuel also correctly um, pointed out that it's going to be the talk's going to be on Monday, not on Tuesday. All right. So on that note, thanks again. Have a wonderful day, night, or uh, evening, or whatever, uh, where you are in the world and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. guys. See you. Thanks, Sabine. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>